This is Jackie from All Access, and I'm here with Nathan of Lion Eyes, and we are enjoying uh, the air conditioning because Camden Warped is uh, it's a hot day today. How have, you been, how have you been enjoying your day today so far? It sound, sounds like you've had a nice, easy morning. Uh, yeah, I've been between the tour bus catering and our uh, uh, booking agent's air-conditioned RV backstage, so I, I've been really roughing it. I've had some iced coffee and some pizza. I'm doing good. So tell me what, uh, give me like a description of like the day in the life on Warp Tour. Let's get detailed here. Uh, the bus parks are between 6.30 and 7.00. Uh, you walk out of the bus, you don't really know you, where you are. you got to find your bearings. And by find a bearings, I mean find the closest porta potty uh, If it's any time past 7.45 a.m., the porta potty is going to be almost unusable. Uh, you want to make it to catering by 8 because then all the eggs are gone and the line to get a bowl of Lucky Charms is out the door. Um, about 8.15, you want to make it over to your stage so you can help your crew guys unload your truck. Otherwise, the monitors are not going to sound as good that day, um, and your time slot might suck. Um, then uh, you have between 9.30 and 10.30 to find out when your band is playing. That could be anywhere from 12.15, 11.15 to uh, 8.15 p.m. Uh, so anytime in between then, you're also going to repeat the porta potty step. <laughs> you're going to find catering again. Um, and you then repeat the porta potty step again. Yes, and catering is really delicious, um, but there's a lot of coffee happening because the sleep sleep is sparse. Um, so after uh, uh, Plague Vendor, one of my favorite bands on the tour. Um, after that, <laughs> they're mine too. Yeah, after that you find uh, you find your you you do your show and then rinse repeat. You find a shower at some point in there if you're lucky, and that's it. Well, it's just a tour. It's just a tour magnified. That's like any other tour. It's just in the outside. And you're beating the heat pretty well today, so it can't go wrong. There is a shower in here, just to let you know. Um, oh, a bit. yeah, it's probably not a good idea to tell Plague Vendor. I would actually really appreciate it if for the rest of the interviews you did not let that, right. let that be known. Deal. Because I'm actually going to come in here right after and take one. Deal, deal. So tell me a little bit more about race. Oh, I'm going to mess up the title. Cool. Jetpack soundtrack. Jet soundtrack. Uh, uh, cool. Oh. Rock. I mean, yeah. straight rock, which is nice on Warp Tour because you have such an eclectic uh, group of music. You've got straight up punk who just walked out the door. You've sure. got uh, pop music. You've got hip hop. But it all did start with a punk and, and rock way back 20 years ago. Yeah. But tell me about Jetpack soundtrack. Uh, it's a straightforward rock and roll record. Um, there's there's tinges of all sorts of fun, um, funk and, and metal. Um, the record was produced by Machine, who's a producer out of New Jersey who's done a lot of bands on the tour, like Four Years Strong and Straight From The Path and Every Time I Die, Fall Out Boy. Um, but the sound of our band is very reminiscent of Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and Cream, uh, maybe some tinges of Clutch. Um, the drummer of Clutch produced the, co-produced the record with Machine, um, and it came out on Weathermaker Music, which is Clutch's record label. So it's a nice little rock and roll family there. And it, and it's sort of local. I mean, Maryland. East. Oh, it's completely. You guys, oh, you guys are from Maryland, Maryland too. Yeah. That's right. I, I apologize for forgetting. I'm based out of Rockville, Maryland, myself. Wow. So our our bass player is from Rockville, Maryland. Actually, lives across the street from Cabin John Shopping Center. I don't live that close, but it's oh, yeah. definitely very local. So, keeping it, Rock keeping it. That's that's the warp tour of uh, of uh, roads. Absolutely. That's the warp tour of roads at noon. So, <laughs> being in between Baltimore and D.C., uh, you're sort of like in the heart of a, a lot of really rich neighborhoods and lots of musical venues. What are some of your favorite venues to play? Nine Thirty Club, hands down, is the best one in the country. I'm not just saying that because I'm biased. I'm saying that because I've been all over the country and we've been all over you know, the world playing music, and 930 Club, hands down, is just, there's nothing like it on the planet. There's no club that that sounds as good, that looks as good, that feels as good to be there, um, and the staff is, it's really just the best. I haven't been to as many venues as I'm sure you have, but I also agree, and I'm biased, but... I yeah, and now they have cupcakes, actually, 930 Club, custom cupcakes when you play there, so it's pretty, that's, you can't beat that. The ones that say 930 on them, and they are... Delicious. Chocolate pudding cupcakes. Well, it's my birthday today, so I'm going to have cake. Happy but birthday. Thank you. 
<laughs> I, I've, I've got a great assistant who brought me cake, so I'm going to have a little bit of that later. Um, 22 years is a, good, is a good year. You are so sweet. Warp Tour, it's Warp Tour's birthday as well. Uh, 20 years. What, yeah. were you, what were you doing 20 years ago? Um, 20 years ago, I was uh, listening to music and playing guitar. Uh, I'm 31 now, so I was just starting to... I'm older, don't go there. Okay. Uh, I was just starting to kind of to find my musical bearings. Okay. I kind of think like uh, kids have the the choice of the music they listen to when they're about 13 or 14. That's sure. when they can actually go out and get it. What did you listen to back then? My parents were super open. Uh, I was allowed to really listen to whatever I wanted, and uh, the stuff I sought out was um, Chili Peppers, uh, um, Nirvana. Uh, stuff along along those lines, but around the same time, um, my spending time with my parents listening to music was always tons of uh, Zeppelin, Beatles, Motown, um, Stax Records, um, CCR, um, Blind Faith, Cream, classic rock. Uh, that also mo melded at the same time as being a, a teenager in DC and discovering Minor Threat and Bad Brains and Government Issue. Um, which you probably, I don't know if you'll hear those names today. You won't, but go, go YouTube them. I'm sure you can find them somewhere. That's, that's inst instead of saying go to Kent Mill Music and find the 7-inch, now you say go YouTube it. Yeah. So, but that's cool. I'm glad it's out there for people to, to, to document and see. So it sounds like a lot of those different musical influences have influenced Line Eyes. Big time. Is there a song on Jetpack's soundtrack that is the most indicative of your band as a whole that if, if, kids walking by heard one song you'd want them to hear? Um, I think there's a song we play called Evolve. Uh, very funky, fun, great riffs. Um, and then the, the ending track on the CD is, uh, is like an eight minute dub jam and that's kind of our homage to the Bad Brains and, and coming from the DC area. Um, there's some tinges of go-go music in there too, uh, which you also probably want. Well, actually, you know what though, the rapper um, Wax who's on the tour is from Dundalk and he knows he's, he's very educated in go-go music and, and DC uh, hip hop and rock. So, man, I wish I had known that when I had talked to him a few days ago, we could have Marilyn strong. There's a lot, uh, Tatiana in production is from St. Mary's County. I think she's from Waldorf. Um, there's a few other players out here that are from the Maryland, uh, from the Maryland. Area. We might have to have a, a little Maryland reunion tonight. I mean, at if, the barbecue. if you had old Bay, we could do it. Oh, speaking of, I, I got to give you my uh, "How do you know you're from Maryland?" quiz. Could you, okay. Well, I know that you that you yeah. are from Maryland. Well, usually, you say boat and o oh and home and phone. But I'm from New Jersey originally. Okay. But I just I've I've been here for a while. So what goes on crabs? Old Bay. Well, it's really actually technically speaking, sorry, it's crab spice, which is different than Old Bay. It's very similar to Old Bay. Old Bay is a commercial version of what goes on the crabs, but crab spice is a, is a, is a cayenne pepper, salt, uh, rock salt, pepper, um, and uh, paprika, and a bunch of other things that kind of make up the, the actual crab spice. Because Old Bay doesn't have rock salt in it. You are an expert. I love that. I love Maryland. Second question, what goes on top of French fries? Old Bay. Okay, and what beer? Or, or crab salt. Or crab salt. What beer contains Old Bay? What beer company has created a brew, including Old Bay? Is it Flying Dog? Ding ding ding! He's the first person to get all three questions. No, well today because you're my first interview. So, first first three out of three of the coming, day. Are you going to be at the Maryland show? Of course I am. Yeah, well, you can try to stump me even even harder than. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with some. We'll, we'll come up with some questions. It. Yeah. So. Uh, after Warp Tour, what's up next for Lion Eyes? Um, we have a tour. We're going on a tour in September with uh, Clutch and American Sharks. That's going to take us all the way out to Denver and back. Um, that's going to be amazing. And there's actually a festival in on the 27th of September, or 29th of September, that ends in Baltimore, and it's called, damn it, I forget the name of it. It's a big festival in Baltimore, and it's like Clutch, uh, uh, Jane's Addiction, Lucero, Flogging Molly. I, I don't, do you know the name of it? Shindig Fest. Shindig, yeah. Um, we'll probably be there. Spiking we'll the football on that one. We'll probably be there hanging out. Clutch is playing. Um, that's where the tour ends. Uh, and then we go on a tour, another tour I can't say right now, but then in the middle of that tour we hop over to the UK and do uh, the Lords of the Rift 2 tour, which um, 
That's a great title for a tour, yeah, by the way. Metal Hammer and Classic Rock put on this tour, and we're completely honored. They they asked us to come back over. We just went over with Clutch recently, and they uh, asked us to come back over and 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 kind of triple headline it with King and Anti Mortem. So we're really excited about doing that because UK is incredible. Very nice. Uh, plans to follow up from Jetpack Soundtrack? We're writing right now. Um, we're always writing, so whenever it kind of we start feeling prolific about it but it's going to be some time uh jetpack came out in february and it's still really kind of pulsating through the the ether so i'm always interested because some bands say that they actually have to put aside separate time to do it and others have no problem writing on the road what sort of things influence you i don't think we write too much on the road but i think we're also constantly all of our stuff comes from ideas whether it's a riff or humming a bass line or a chorus or um we're always kind of piecing that stuff together. Uh, what influences us is pr probably mostly a lot about the music that we're listening to. Um, we always listen to a lot of jazz music, and that kind of puts us in a, a certain direction. And then that direction kind of leads us to, it always kind of goes back to rediscovering some cream and deep purple. And, nice. You know, um, there's so much Sabbath, too, that, you can just listen to it and hear stuff that you didn't hear before, and you're like, that's probably going to steal that riff. That's a pretty great idea. <laughs> and now, borrowing from those bands and, and letting that soak in, and you come to a place that's full of 16, 17-year-old kids, they have no reference for it. So it's a pretty great opportunity to play that stuff. And All those bands that don't have videos on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They're just harder. They have way less hits than uh, your... your um, Gangnam style, so. Wow, that was a great reference. Yeah. Sad, but true. It's just, it's what it is. I mean, but there are a lot of great rock bands still really pushing it, and you have bands like Clutch, and you have Mastodon, and you have Red Fang, and you have The Sword. Um, you have American Sharks. You have King. You do have a lot of really great bands out there still, still playing rock and roll, and they're really good at it. Well, check out all those bands that he just mentioned, because they are all really good. But more importantly, check out more from Lion Eyes. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change.